Hey everybody, Jason here. So today I'm going to continue working on my tiny little house and I'm going to focus on putting in, for lack of a better term, what I'm going to call the subfloor. So I've got a small little challenge when doing this and it's that the trailer that I'm using is 51 inches wide and to put in plywood, plywood is 48 inches wide. So I've got this small little gap that I'm gonna have to expand the bottom piece of plywood to go from side to side. Now to do that, I've decided I'm gonna use a tongue and groove, three quarter inch plywood, and then I gotta glue them up together. So I'm basically gonna be building the subfloor the same way that I would if it was a boat. So I'm gonna be using fiberglass and epoxy and wood. So there are gonna be a couple other challenges along the way. Uh, for example, once I build in the subfloor, I'm actually gonna lift it out of the frame of the trailer and flip it over so that I can coat the underside easy. Probably excessive, but I figure if I can coat the underside then it'll be better protected from you know like water and snow mildew and rot yeah lots to do so I'm gonna get started <laughs> Finishing off the subfloor is kind of time consuming. The labor isn't what's taking so long, but it's that I'm using epoxy and epoxy takes, you know, a good 24 to 48 hours to get a full cure. And, you know, when I joined up the two pieces of plywood to make the subfloor, uh, I epoxied them together. So I didn't really want to disturb that and I wanted to make sure that it set properly. You know, obviously the subfloor is a pretty important part. So after filling the gap and any, you know, knot holes or, you know, what have you uh, in the bottom of the piece of plywood uh, and laminating the two pieces together, I attached three strips of uh, plywood, uh, two near either end and one near the center, um, just to help hold it, well, hold it tight together, but also hold it so that it would be relatively flat. Um, I didn't want it to, you know, like cup or anything like that, the two pieces, uh, and, you know, have the epoxy cure solid, that would not be good at all. So by attaching those pieces of plywood, it just helps hold it rigid and in place. So the epoxy has fully cured now, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna remove those plywood strips and then start building up the rest of the subfloor.
Okay, so the sides are glued up to the bottom of the subfloor, but what I'm gonna do is add some fiberglass to the bottom edges. Okay, so I'm down to show you. So what I'm concerned about is that water, like rain, is gonna possibly, you know, most likely hit the side of the, the tiny house camper and run down, and then it will go, you know, between the steel and the wood, and it'll run down and it could pool or, you know, just sit there and uh, rot out the bottom of the camper. So my plan is to just put a small amount of uh, fiberglass in that bottom corner all the way around and then up the side edges as well. So that'll stop rain from getting in through the seams, uh, but also hopefully prevent any rot down the road. So I've got all the fiberglass wrapped around the bottom edge and up the inside corners. Now I've had to put the subfloor back into the trailer and I'm gonna add the platform assembly next. I have to do this part inside the trailer because I wanna make sure that the platform is level all the way across, that it has the proper angle, you know, 90 degree angle from the sides of the subfloor um, or the box. So I'm assembling it right now with some Thixo epoxy and just some one and a quarter inch screws just to pull it down. Once that Thixo is cured, I'll have to take it out again and flip it over and then I'll do the fiberglass on the underside. Like I've said before, I've never done this before, but you know, logic tells me that if I'm driving with the trailer behind me in the rain, rain's gonna hit the side and then it could run underneath and then, you know, run towards the box itself. So that underside, if it's not 
fiberglass or if it's not sealed watertight then water will possibly get into the joint between the platform and the box and then that'll eventually cause you know rot and decay and uh, I want to avoid that. I want this to last as long as possible so taking these extra steps now will hopefully get me a few more years use out of it. As for dimensions what I'm doing is I'm coming out 12 inches but I also have 6 inches on the inside so the inside 6 inches will end up being a part of a bench inside and then it'll come out and I'll build my walls off of the outside edge. Okay, so it's been a couple weeks since I've been able to do any work since the weather's just been horrible. We've been getting a lot of rain lately. In fact, today's the only day this week that hasn't had any rain. It's supposed to rain again tomorrow. So I'm gonna quickly sand down all the fiberglass that I've laid up just to create a semi-smooth surface. And then I'm gonna coat the bottom with a truck bed liner. Now I've decided to use truck bed liner. It was kind of a tough decision. I wasn't sure whether I would use fiberglass and epoxy for the entire bottom. Uh, but I believe I'll save some money and I think not entirely sure but I think that the truck bed liner should provide a little bit more abrasion resistance so you know what I'm thinking is that uh, you know with boats you, the fiberglass scratches up when you hit rocks or whatever uh, truck bed liner I believe should be more protective for uh, you know just like stones that bounce up from the ground and also still provide that waterproof so yeah anyway I'm gonna get to work
Okay, so I just finished putting brackets underneath the side ledges and I'm gonna wrap up this video there. In the next video, I'll start building the walls. So if you haven't already subscribed, please do. And don't forget to leave a comment and give the video the thumbs up if you've enjoyed it. All right, thanks for watching.